everybody, and today I am here to preview the Packer Week. Now, this one's a little less dramatic than, the, than we would have hoped it would be, but they are 23rd in total offense at 314 yards a game, 22nd in passing offense, which is obviously with Aaron Rodgers being out most of the year, we assumed would struggle a bit. At 206.3 yards a game, they are 30th in sacks allowed, allowing 46 this year. 18th in rushing offense, 107.7 yards a game. And they are tied for 5th in 4.5 yards on their average, which that's a lot better than I anticipated this being. They are 11th in 3rd down offense at 41%. Their defense, 26th total defense in the league at 346.4 yards a game allowed. 24th in passing defense at 240 yards a game allowed. They are tied 16th in sacks this year, having 32. They have rushing defense, 116.4 yards a game allowed, and they are tied for 8th in yards per carry allowed at 4, this 4 flat. And they are 30th on 3rd down defense, which is a struggle for them at 45%. And their injury report looks as follows. Devontae Adams, the receiver, concussion out. Jahari Evans, he's a guard. He's a starting guard. He did not practice all week, but is listed as questionable with a knee injury. Clay Matthews, their outside linebacker, occasionally inside linebacker, depending how injuries go. Hamstring injury, did not practice, also listed as questionable. Nick Perry, their other outside linebacker, who's an edge rusher. Ankle and shoulder problem, did not practice. He's doubtful this week. Vince Beagle, a rookie from uh, Wisconsin. He was limited for Tuesday and Wednesday, then was folding on uh, Thursday, so he should be fine to go. Ahmad Brooks, same deal. And so there's your two outside linebackers in case the other two can't go. Quinton Dial, limited practice all week, but they didn't give him a status quo, so I assume he's in, although banged up with a chest and a knee injury. Dimitri Goodson, a hamstring, was limited the first few days and did not practice the next day, which was Thursday, so he's out. And Devon House, shoulder and back injury, limited all week and is listed as questionable. Then you have Lucas Patrick and Jake Ryan, both with, with uh, Lucas Patrick has a hand and Jake Ryan has a knee. Both are practiced all week. And then obviously you have A.A. Ron pushed back on IR this week. And going over to Minnesota, they are 8th in total offense, 367.6 yards a game. 9th in passing offense at 246.4 yards a game. And they are 7th in sacks allowed at 22. 9th in rushing offense, 121.3 yards a game, which I know looks actually pretty decent. It looks pretty good on the front. And then you look at the other thing, which is they're tied for 21st in the league at 3.9 yards on their average yards per carry. So... This is more of a collective effort than it is, oh, their running game's elite. And this would look a lot better with Dalvin Cook. And it mm, stings me a little bit to know he's not here. And they are third on third down deep on third down offense, my bad, at 45% of the time, which is ironically the same amount of time, same percentage that the defense gives up for Green Bay. So, and then on defense, Minnesota's second in total defense at 283.9 yards a game. Third in passing defense, 198.6 yards a game allowed. They are tied for 13th in sacks at 35. And they are second in rushing defense, 85.3 yards a game allowed. And they are tied for fifth in yards per carry allowed at 3.7. And they're, for, they're first and third down defense, 26%. And injury report, Jarius Wright. He was listed with a foot injury, but he looks like he's going to be a go. Tremaine Brock has a foot injury. He did not practice, and he's listed as out. Sandejo did not practice the first day, was limited Wednesday, and then was a full go today, and he's questionable. Riley Reef did not practice Tuesday, limited him both other days. He's also questionable. Ben Gideon has an ankle problem, but he was limited the first day, and then he had uh, the next two days of being a full participant, so he looks like he's going to go. Kyle Rudolph was limited all week, but wasn't listed as a questionable, doubtful, or any of those type of deal. So he he looks like he's a go. Mackenzie Alexander, he our slot nickelback. He is still having a rib problem, and he's questionable, being limited all week. 
Elfline has a shoulder issue, as he did last week. He was limited the first two days, and then there was a full go today, as was Mike Remmers, and they played last week, so I anticipate those two playing again. Emmanuel Lemur, foot injury, he was a full go. McKinnon, shoulder injury, was a full go all week, as was Shamar Steffen with the same injury. And those last three just played all week. So, And then offensively, I think even with Reef being questionable and probably able to come back, I think you play Rashad Hill at left tackle again, just because of Nick Perry and Clay Matthews not practicing all week one, Matthews being questionable and Perry being doubtful. And if you're doubtful, I'm going to assume you're just out. That's how I always looked at that. And even if Clay Matthews plays, we're not going to get the same Pro Bowl caliber Clay Matthews that you normally see. You're going to get a dinged up Clay Matthews who might be a little slower off the edge. So with that being said, I say... Rest Reef, we need to make sure that man is ready for the playoffs because he makes a big difference in this offense against these more competitive teams, which is a little weird saying about Green Bay this late in the year, not used to that. And But I would say rest Reef, let him, let him nurse that ankle injury a little bit more and possibly bring him back next week against Chicago just so he doesn't get like a month off, poss- possibly. And... We might be able to attack both through the air and on the ground this week, just given the injuries, because they are banged up at linebacker. So, because we already touched base on Nick Perry and Clay Matthews, Ahmad Brooks showed up, as did Vince Bijel, and Jake Ryan also showed up, although he's a full participant all week. So I think you might be able to run the ball on this team, because you also have Quentin Dial, their nose tackle, who was on this list. So although it... Those other two and Jake Ryan and Quentin Dial look to play this week. I still think since they're kind of banged up, it wouldn't be all too difficult to say. Like, oh, we could possibly run the ball on them, especially since we get Elfline back this week again. So due to injuries, I would say that. And then throwing the ball, which has been kind of their downfall as of late, you could say... uh, with the two corner injuries, with Dimitri Goodson being out and Devon House being questionable, that this could be another day where we might be able to really throw the ball again on them. So, <laughs> makes me think we might have this chance to attack them whenever we want. But I would lean towards the running game in this just because of the weather. And I don't really want to... Yeah, it didn't... <laughs> cold weather games usually don't end up being throw-happy games. So... They, I heard it was going to be 4 degrees on this night, and that's why I'm saying that. So, I would prefer it to be more of a running game kind of thing that comes up here. And just kind of run it right down their throats, and then maybe we can shorten the game time, and we can keep that that offense off the field, even though I, I know it's not nearly as threatening. But just kind of get it over with, because I think I'll touch base on this later on the defensive side. But I really think this will help just keeping them off the field. And so just grind the clock with Latavius Murray. That's kind of what I think. And I feel like they should do what they're supposed to do. And that's move the ball and score points when you have the ball. So defensively with Adams and Evans likely not playing, I would also expect them to go more run happy. Which plays right to our strengths being the second rated run defense. So they might be a little bit more unhappy not trusting their guard, their backup guard, to really pass protect. And you don't have Devontae Adams. And Jordy Nelson looks like he's starting to show his age a little bit after a torn AC, coming back from a torn ACL last year. And obviously Brett Hundley's back in, not Aaron Rodgers. So you don't get those magical plays. So you might be more lenient just to run the ball with Montgomery and Jamal Williams and all those guys. So... Oh, and Aaron Jones. but So I would anticipate them running the ball more. And I think that leads to a lot of third and longs for them. And we might be able to get turnovers. Because we did last time. Whenever we got them into third and long. Kind of felt like there was a pretty good chance for a sack or a turnover. And I kind of expect that again this come this time around. Where we might be able to get those sacks and turnovers off of Brett Hundley. When we get them into third and long in predictable situations. And so this kind of, for me, this kind of feels like it's going to be a very, 
Like, this should be a game that we have in hand, and they should be able to make them one-dimensional. Because it, there's nothing on that I see with this team, given the injuries and air, like just how everything is built. This should be a win very firmly, and you shouldn't throw this away, barring any ref problems, which we've had in Green Bay a few times. And the one thing I want to touch base on last, before I go to my prediction, would be Barr. Barr needs to, if we get a decent lead, I almost think we need to take Barr out, because if he get because I don't really trust these guys to not take the shot at him just because of the whole Aaron Rodgers thing, which I still believe was a clean play. I don't know if I'm going to get any hate for saying that, but... <coughs> sorry. But to me, it was a clean play. And once you leave the pocket, you're considered a runner. So that's why that was legal. And But I don't trust these guys not to take a shot at bar if we get... Because, once again, I heard it was going to be four degrees. So if it's actually four degrees and you get and they get down by two scores, two three scores, they might kind of and you see them invisibly start to give up. They may start taking shots at him. So I would almost think if you get a, to a point where you can kind of visibly see them give up a bit, you might want to take Anthony Barr out of the game just because if he gets hurt, there's nothing behind him to do what he does. Like, uh, do you guys trust Ben Gideon or Emmanuel Lemur to really? step up and do that, or Kentrell Brothers, or whoever they would want to put there, I assume it would be Lemur, but I, I don't, so to me, you kind of need to, you need to keep an eye on that, and make sure nothing really happens there, because I think, to me, the only thing that can really derail the season for, like, oh, they're done, kind of like that, other than losing in the playoffs, is injuries, and key ones at that. That's why I'm saying you need to keep Reef off the field for this week, especially since it doesn't look like Perry is going to play. And Matthews is questionable but didn't play this week, so it wouldn't surprise me if both of them end up being out. And so just let Reef nurse that injury and don't let him risk further injury. Same thing kind of applies here. If you can avoid an injury to a key player, do it. So, and my prediction for this game is... Minnesota going up 28 to 13, improving to 12 and 3, and then we get to root against both the Panthers and the Eagles. Because the Panthers, if they lose, we clinch a first round bye, and if Philly loses to the Raiders, we have, I believe, I don't know if we have the tiebreakers anymore, but I'm pretty sure we do. Uh, so we would be at least tied with them. So, and then if Dallas wins, that's the other thing. I think we need to do, even though it might hurt some of you guys, because I know people hate Dallas. Um, you need to kind of root for Dallas this week, just because if they win again, and if Philly manages to lose a game, then we really have a chance to, because that last game of the year for Philly playing Dallas, if Dallas has something to play for, it really could ramp things up in terms of seeding. So you get that number one seed, we need a few things to happen. I'm not expecting them to, but there is a chance to. And until after the game, I bid you guys adieu.